The uh, independent activities list is a list for you to use and in your classes as well as enjoy reading and researching. And it's a list that will uh, help your acting, but it is not a list that is your acting. So it is a starting place to be able to do the work. It is something where you're able to uh, achieve um, a great deal of, of, of things because you can learn what it's like to accomplish something. And uh, you can learn what it's like to measure th that accomplishment. And that alone, in terms of just the research, can help your acting a lot. Uh, many of those independent activities on the lists, um, they can become uh, critical uh, learning tools for the actor to be able to achieve acting. So when you're learning acting, you can uh, really utilize the, um, the list of, of independent activities. Now, an independent activity is an independent doing. It uh, is the reason why I've, uh, in my own writings, I've changed it to the doing exercise because there's a portion of the work that's an independent activity, which is, a, which is, which is independent, and then what it attaches to is what's essentially you have a person that's look back back when Meisner actually taught in the classes. Uh, he had uh, called the uh, the work the inside and outside. Somebody was in, somebody was out, and uh, that's why um, in some of the writings I've added the fact that it's a doing exercise because. It is. There's a there's a person that's inside the room, that's inside the stage, that's on the one side of the inside of the door, uh, in the exercise, and that person is involved in an independent activity, or an independent doing, and you could also be very accurate if you if you titled the uh, work inside. Uh, um, an independent um, uh, involvement because your your job as an actor is to be independently involved so there that when you end up having somebody knock on the door it's by happenstance and the independent activity list is is a list of, of acting um, potentials to start the work to be able to start working and learning using the thing called concentration. So when you're using the thing called concentration, you're using the thing that's uh, achieving something that is a, um, well, there's, there's, grades, there's grades to the, to the independent activity. There's all sorts of different levels depending upon which level of work you're at. If you're just starting out, it might just be a simple doing. If you're doing this work for quite a long time, you're going to be probably quite involved in the independent activity. And that independent activity is going to harness you the ability to lose yourself in your acting work, which is the initial tool for you to be able to um, effectively um, you start to learn how to do scenes because you're starting to learn how to involve yourself in a practical way where you have yourself tangibly um, occupied or not occupied by distraction but occupied by involvement and there's a huge difference between being occupied by involvement and being um, occupied by uh, distraction your point of these exercises of the independent activities is not just to be there to use those as a prop. Your point of these independent activities is to be able to use these as a way so that you have something that you're completely entrenched in, something that you're completely involved in. And when you're involved, you should forget about time. It's like uh, these... Uh, the creators of these video places, they, they, if they're doing the take correctly, 
or if the person doing the acting is doing the thing correctly for the Oscar uh, take, sometimes they'll actually end up saying that they lost track of time. They didn't know where they went. They had no clue what was going on at that time. Those are all good things. You want to have those happening in your acting. You want to. You have to. This is what you're working to do. This is what this list is so important for. And there's many reasons why this list is important. But the independent activities are something that you want to be able to immerse yourself into the doing of. You don't want to occupy yourself into trying to act like you're doing something. You want to actually be involved. And you should not worry about anything other than just getting those activities done. Now, your teachers have your own teaching etiquettes. Follow your teacher's etiquettes. They might have an, a very uh, unique thing for a specific student, and that's very important to listen to the acting teachers. However, if you also take into consideration and start thinking for yourself, you will achieve acting even quicker, and you will maybe uh, in some cases, even learn acting a little bit slower, but more thorough. So, uh, depending on who you are and what you're uh, like, uh, the teacher should be able to point you into the direction that includes involvement in your acting scenarios. Because when you're doing the work correctly, uh, your teacher should either say nothing at all or tell you you did good. And uh, often that's the case. Um, and that's also the case with audiences. After some of these very involved scenes that happen in the, where the actors actually lose their full concentration and they have no idea where they are other than, than that the, the time has passed, but they have no idea if, if, uh, if the scene's been five minutes or 50 minutes. Those are the types of realities that you want and need to be able to achieve in how involved in your independent activities you are. It's not a game. You're not there to play a game with the independent activities being there as a prop. You're not going to need a prop to prop up your acting if you're doing acting. You're going to be using acting by training yourself to be able to learn how to concentrate. And by using the independent activities list here, you can definitely help yourself to be able to take the initial steps to learning acting by learning how to be able to concentrate as you're doing a task. And this is the reason why myself, I call these the doing exercises, but I, I have to honor everybody's hard work at, in the acting field and they're they're actually called the independent activities but they're independent doings so the best thing to do to select uh, something on this list is go down this list and there's well over uh, hundreds of them and start exploring go down the list and see if there's anything that kind of tingles you. You want to see if there's an interest that you have in something. Do you know how to get something done? Do you not know how to get something done? If you're looking at the word weaving, then you want to look up the word weaving. Maybe you're overlooking something if you're having a struggle and able to find something to put into your acting work. So your independent activity can be the baseline for your initiation of you being able to achieve acting. And that's how serious you want to take it. I mean, only as seriously as you want to become an actor. So if you want to become an actor, you can approve, you can, uh, uh, approve yourself, but you can give yourself the permission to really be able to invest that kind of energy into your work. And uh, believe me, you would be able to do that. And this list will be able to help but go down this list and really look at the different terms. 
When you've got something that you've got something that you're thinking about from the list, stop. Go back to the list later. S keep thinking about what it is that you've just thought of with the list. What this will do is this will uh, allow you to use your own brainstorming techniques of which I don't know what they are. I could tell you that I know that you have creative ways of brainstorming if you access it. I could suggest general uh, things of how people uh, typically brainstorm, but I don't know how you typically brainstorm unless I've sat in on your classes, which is very possible. And, you know, th the, the reality of this is that you want to really be able to take this work and start to create your own work with it. You don't want to copy it. You don't want to plagiarize it. You want to still give credit to where credit's due. And always that's going to be the truth just with acting too. You want to be able to make every part in acting your own. So take um, the idea of finding one or two ideas and typically you want to have uh, between two and three ideas for a class you're preparing for so that you always have a backup in case something's not working for you or you can decide uh, spontaneously just before doing the work if that's a process that works for you that you then be able to achieve it that way and some people will take what they'll do is is now not everyone but some people will actually take two or three activities, independent activities, things that they know that they can concentrate on and be well involved in. And they will actually take two or three of those to each class that they attend. So you'll see them walk in with uh, uh, a pair of um, uh, stretchers or uh, you'll, you'll see them... Uh, walk in with a whole bunch of stuff that they it may not look like they use it. Well, they might not use it. They might have one or two or three activities with them. So they're, they're bringing more than just what's being asked of them to do, which is one activity. And this is a very important step because if you're very serious about acting, you, you want to be able to both take your time as well as be ready to be... Um, quick about things if you need to. So if you have two or three activities every single class, and this, this list makes it very easy for you to have two or three activities every single class, then what you do is you, uh, then you take all the things required for each of those activities, and you'll probably find out that you'll take them to multiple classes, and that's no problem. Just expect it. And sometimes what will happen is you'll be asked to work twice in your acting because the teacher will know that you always have an independent activity that's prevalent to acting. And this is how uh, you're going to be able to get extra work in. This is how you're going to be able to get extra preparation in. And what will actually happen when you take uh, two or three independent activities at once to your classroom is the teacher will see, see the incentive and you will also be able to, um, uh, well, this is what happens. You'll be able to use what you actually think is your strongest at that moment for the class. And then what will end up happening is that you will then be able to take your acting classes. And after your acting classes, say you only use one activity which is great because you're using a strong activity, you feel very good about it, you feel like you're really able to get really involved in that activity. And you're able to do that, and you do that, and then you've got this period of time where you kind of feel like you're, uh, often if you work really this well, yeah, you'll feel a time where you're feeling a little bit out of it after your class. And then, uh, and that's okay because that's an adjustment period that actually is natural for an actor to do when they're entering or exiting a, an acting class. And then what you'll find is you'll find, uh, you'll apply your knowledge from that class that you've taken uh, and worked in, and you'll uh, be able to um, 
uh, strengthen the other activities that you brought with even fresh ideas or new new concepts or you'll make additions to them and you'll start layering the different uh, aspects of the independent activity and make it harder based on based on what the teacher says so uh, or based on your own personal experience regardless if the teacher is any good or not uh, because there's all sorts of acting teachers and you try to respect them uh, and their opinions and uh, you do that uh, as much as you can and you learn something from them uh, regardless of uh, how good they are because they might be very well intentioned even though they're not um, very skilled so this is the way to approach it uh, approach it um, in a in a healthy way um, make sure you're well prepared and uh, um, another video will go through the um, aspects of uh, uh, how to be able to achieve um, setting those independent activities up even more than what I've just said about how to use this list.